A Duff Said is brought to you by Sheldon Street Pizza. Visit them online at SheldonStreetPizza.com or stop by Sheldon's during your next trip to Lake Orion. Sheldon Street Pizza, the official pizza of A Duff Said. And by Fourth Coast Cider Works, quality craftsmanship, quality hard cider. You can check them out online at FourthCoastCiderWorks.com or come get a can or a howler at their Canterbury Village location. Not available for anyone under the age of 21. Please drink responsibly. Hi, this is Ben Hassinger, Michigan's ukulele ambassador and baseball balladeer. And you are listening to the best sports podcast here in Michigan, and that's A Duff Said. Thank you so much for hitting the play button on your favorite listening device of choice from wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Duff Tyler, and that's A Duff Said. For the first time since 2012, Lake Orion football is 4-0. Last week, the Dragons took down third-ranked West Bloomfield 17-13 on their home turf. Lake Orion now holds the sixth spot in the top ten rankings for Division I in the state of Michigan. The Dragons are tied for first place in the OAA Red with rival Clarkston. This week, I am joined by head coach Chris Bell and senior defensive players Joey DeBrinkett and Caden DeGraffenreed. Now, all three of them told me they expected to achieve this level of success. We also talk about how they plan to stay undefeated after this Friday's showdown with Stony Creek. That conversation starts now. You were a part of last Friday's win against West Bloomfield. First off, tell me what that atmosphere was like this past Friday. Oh, we had, well... In my opinion, that's that was one of the biggest games I've ever played in any sports all across the board. Uh, we got home advantage, so I got there, get to see my lovely crowd, my student section, my family, full support. You got some of the best two top ten teams facing at it. Uh, can you couldn't really ask for a better environment. You know, we just do our stuff, get warmed up, play the person in front of you, and just go. It was lovely. Take me through that entire night. What was it like to just come out onto the field and see that atmosphere? Well, of course, we walk up before for warm-ups, and uh, specialists will go onto the field, get my warm-up in. And of course, I immediately look to see my see if my family arrived. I always got to see my mom and dad are there. And uh, I guess I just kind of get mentally focused. I don't really like to talk much. I kind of get my warm-up in. I'll notice friends here and there in the student section. Other than that, I'm kind of just getting in my zone. Not really looking at the opponents as much, but more so just high-fiving all my teammates during the warm-ups, getting connected, and just getting ready to go, really. I'm glad you brought that up because, obviously, it's a big night anytime West Bloomfield and Lake Orion get together. These are two storied programs here in Oakland County and really in the state of Michigan. So you know it's going to be a big night, lots of people there. So how did you manage to tune all that out and stay focused? I guess, because you could obviously tell a lot of the stadium, a lot of people there, like you said, but I guess ooh, just the ability to stay focused on your assignment. And like, obviously in between plays, I'm like catching my breath and looking over at the sidelines, uh, seeing what we're running and all that. And uh, basically just kind of tune it out, but still know that, Fans are there to support you. Got all my teammates on the sideline. You're just, it's, it really is like a family and like brotherly experience because you know everybody is there to support you and it's really nice. This was the first time that Lake Orion got a win over West Bloomfield since 2013. What were you guys feeling at that moment when the clock hit zeros and the losing streak was finally over? Uh, we felt great. We just we just made history. We did something nobody did in a long time. Honestly, I was uh last defensive series. I was on the sideline. I, I was kind of relieved. I was like, I got us to this point, but uh, I was kind of emotional at the end. It was just a lot going on, and I was just super happy for all my teammates and I, I just all the work we put in. I was so happy. It's a lot going on. In Duff, if I can pipe as well, one thing that's unique with high school. You know, it had been 10 years since we'd beaten them. But these guys only know, you know, only know the last couple. They don't carry the 10 years with them. 
you know, us old guys who've been around a while, we, you know, we do. <laughs> but the uh, these guys, they, they only know the last couple of years. And, and, you know, these guys went into the game expecting to win. That's the other thing, too. We, it wasn't a let's go upset them. I mean, we knew who the rankings were. We knew who was favored, this and that. But these guys took the field expecting to win the game. So, a great game, great win, but it wasn't an upset. I mean, our guys expected to win. No, and especially when you're three and zero at this point, and you've taken care of your business up to this point. So, you, coach, you were probably thinking, "Why not us? Why don't we go out there and get this W?" Well, yeah, you know, Westwood—they're very talented. They have some great players. They've also been hit with some injuries too. They've lost some kids. They lost some linebackers. Um, you know, we weren't playing the teams they had in the past years. We were playing this year's team. And uh, even though they have some great players, we felt like we matched up with them. We knew it was going to be a battle, but we knew we could beat them. If we, if we played well, we, we felt like we could beat them. Caden, you had some of the biggest plays in this game. First, take me through the interception that, that you had uh, that led to the first three points of the game for Lake Orion. What did you see on that play, and how did it unfold? Uh, I've seen everything I've seen all week. I was actually talking about that play in my first hour, so I just read it. And I, I knew that I was coming off that trip's bunch, and I picked it up. And then you were able to get the sack that ended the game. Take me through that play. What did you see, and what was going through your mind when you saw that you had that opportunity to clinch this one for the Dragons? I mean, I had that play. I had moved the edge rusher right, and I was dog tired. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was past. <laughs> I was dog tired. But I was like, man, I just got to get home on this play. I got to get home. And my outside linebacker coach was like, you got you to gotta get there. This, it's all you now. So I got, to the, I got to the quarterback and I ended the game. Dude, that's why you do those wind sprints in practice before the season even starts. That's why you do that conditioning so that you can make those plays. I know it can get exhausting, but that's why you do it. When you realized that at that moment you had made the play that saved the day for Lake Orion, take me through your emotions. What were you feeling at that at particular moment? Uh, actually, I thought we we had like one more play to go because they, they was trying to line it back up. But then the clock hit zero and it all just set in. I just seen everybody jumping up in excitement. My teammates running on the field. And I was, I was just so excited. I didn't know what to do at, the, at that point. I mean, it was like time was standing still. But you see, Coach, that's the kind of player you like, uh, the kind of guy that, yeah, I made a big play, but is it still over yet? Do I have to do anything more? This is the kind of play that you realize we just did something special. How happy were you for Caden, Coach Bell, that he was able to make that play for you? Well, both the guys, you know, you look at, they were, Caden was all over the field. And we lined them up outside, inside. Uh, Ricky Powell, our defensive coordinator, did a great job. Different looks, bringing pressures. Sometimes he drops in coverage. Sometimes he's coming off the edge. And, uh, you know, I, I was just so proud of the guys. You know, they, they work so hard. And, you know, it's like every week for us has been a different test. And they keep passing. You know, they, they, they've passed them all so far. It's part of growth of a football team. But, you know, these guys have worked so hard that, that to see the success, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't been easy. You know, it, it's, it's come because they work hard. And, they, and I think it's that, you know, that mentality of, okay, next play. Well, that's kind of their work ethic. You know, let's just keep working. Let's keep working and, you know, hopefully good things keep happening. But it's not, you know, they, they don't happen by accident. They happen because our guys play so hard and they work so hard, especially these two right here. And, Joey, what was it like for you to see that play unfold and realize that you had gotten the win and you were remaining undefeated? It was kind of emotional on the sidelines. Uh, I got taken out for that last drive. We were putting in like a – kind of prevent pass coverage type of defense just for security. And so I'm, I was pacing back and forth on that sideline, just kind of anxious and like just a lot of emotions building up. Cause like, I, like KD said earlier, I was dog tired at the time going special teams, both ways, this and that. But uh, no, by the end, when that, when that clock hit zero, I was happy, man. I rushed the field. I probably sprinted, sprinted faster to the student section than any of those last fourth quarter plays, but. Uh, that was that was a lot going on. What was it like to be in the crowd and to celebrate that moment and bring something special to Lake Orion? You know, the the word I keep hearing, Duff, is I've, got, I've gotten all week about it felt like a playoff atmosphere. It felt like old time Orion. Felt like a playoff atmosphere. You know, but it was, it's about playing games here. You know, you mentioned that how you know that that big game. 
you know, I, for our, our, our players are spoiled because, you know, whether you're playing Oxford, whether you're playing West Bloomfield, whether you're playing Stony Creek, whether you're, no matter who you're playing, our fans show up. Our fans, our stands are always packed. It's always loud. The band's always going. The cheerleaders going. The dance team. It's, you know, Friday nights here are Friday night party. And it's a pretty special place to play. And, uh, yeah, the whole it's one of those. Everything shuts down. It's, it's what to do on Friday night in Lake Orion. You're at the game. So, uh, that's, I think it helps our guys. They're used to that atmosphere. They've grown up with it. They're used to it. They play it. It doesn't matter who you play. That's just the way it is. What's it like to hear Coach describe this atmosphere? Because I read in the paper that you compared this to being in an atmosphere like Georgia versus Alabama. So what's it like for you to be in that kind of moment against a very good program with so much on the line early on in the season when you guys are trying to compete for that OAA Red title? I think with us both being undefeated and being ranked highly, uh, it was going to be a dogfight. We knew head into this. I assume West Bloomfield and Lake Orion were both working up towards the same goal, be each other and whatnot. But I don't know. It was it was just a dogfight. Yeah, more in more of two that was the win is outstanding. But whoever wins and what you know, it was going to be it was going to be a growth moment for both programs. You know, somebody somebody had to win, somebody had to lose. You know what? And if we came up short. You know, yeah, we, we have a different mindset, but I'm just as proud of our guys, the way they played, win or lose. I mean, it was going to be a battle, and both programs, I think, got better. West Bloomfield definitely got better, you know, and, and we did too. I mean, we watched the film, and, yeah, we got the win, but we looked at it, man, there's a lot of things we can improve on and be even better. So, you know, it, you're right, it's, it's the right mindset, but, you know, it's a long season, and it's one of those games that I just wanted to see us compete, and I wanted to see us, be, see us battle. And then, you know, to come out on top is just, you know, that, that's, you know, that, that's just extra. I mean, obviously we want to win, but it was more about how are we going to play? How are we going to compete? And that was important for us as a, as a football team and program. Well, you've certainly gotten better defensively, and that's a credit uh, to you guys and the rest of that unit because over the last few weeks, teams have had trouble scoring off you guys. You've held three straight opponents to under 20 points. What have you guys been doing that has given you that success? We've been locking in all week, uh, focusing on what we got to do. Everybody, each each individual on what they have to do. Everybody do their job. We all be good for the whole game. Yeah, kind of piggybacking off what he just said. A lot of it's trusting your teammates, knowing that the person next to you is going to do his job, and that you're going to do yours, and knowing your assignment. Uh, we have a lot of meetings before and after practice, too, and everybody needs to dial in for those, taking notes on their assignments and what to do, basically. So, do you- Defensive staff has done a great job. So Ricky Powell uh, has done a great job coordinating the defense. And uh, all the coaches, all the assistant coaches on the defensive side have done a great job. Our guys run. Our guys run to the ball. They play fast and they, and they play hard. And that's really what it comes down to. Uh, we, we've got a lot of speed on defense, and our guys run. And they, they, and they run to the ball. And they, that's something there's, you got you to have the want in it, and our guys have that. They want to get to the football. And uh, they're and they're learning that, that that's what's driving their success. And we, the whole West Bloomfield to under 30 yards rushing, you know, was a huge accomplishment. You know, and they've got talent all over the place. And they, you know, and they and they still move the ball through the air. They got a great quarterback, good receivers, but we kept them out of the end zone. And so, you could be proud of those guys. You know, defense defense kept us in it until we could figure it out offensively. What else can we expect to see out of this unit? Keep getting better. You you know, football season it's it's a it's a marathon, and you got to keep getting better every week. You get better, you get worse. And when you play in the OAA Red, you can't take a week off. The Stony Creek's going to come in here and give us everything we want. You know, they, they've you know their their record isn't what they want it to be, but they played teams tough. They're an OAA Red team, and they're physical. And so, I mean, every, every week is a challenge. Just got to keep getting better. What does it mean to all three of you to know that for the first time since 2012, Lake Orion football is four and zero? What has this run been like for you guys so far? It's exactly what we expected for all the hard work in the summer. This is what we all worked up to do. And it's not a soccer. It's just soccer to y'all, but this is what we've been working for this whole time. I'm just trying to take it one week at a time and getting kind of like a play, just one play at a time and just each week playing team in front of you. So. What's the mood like been around school for you guys? Having people come up to you and tell you, you know, great job, keep it up, keep up that momentum, let's keep winning for the Dragons. School's excited, community's excited. 
but you know, we as we 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 humble ourselves. They know, you know, it's your Woody Hayes theory. You know, somebody says something nice to you, you know, we we say punch him in the mouth, but it's you know, <laughs> so that's your Woody Hayes thing. I had to explain to the guys who Woody Hayes was. Can't be too humble. But uh, yeah, they know every week you're zero and zero. It, what, if if what you did yesterday seems like a lot, you haven't done much today. So we're zero and zero going into tomorrow. We're going into Friday, so it's uh, you know, they put behind you know at the end of the season, that's the time to sit back and reflect upon your accomplishments. But the problem you already read is you start thinking about what you've done, you forget who's coming. Mm-hmm. And when you got Stony Creek coming and Rochester Adams coming and Clarkson coming, there's no time to sit around and feel good about yourselves. You are in a stacked conference. In fact, uh, I, I think I've heard you on more than one occasion refer to the OAE Red as kind of like the SEC of Michigan football with all the great talent that you have there. But what's it like to know that you guys are at least in the running right now to being one of those top teams in that division? It's where, it's, as Caden said, it's, it's where we expected to be and where we should be. We, we have a talented team. You know, we've we got some good players who work really hard. Uh, smart players, um, you know, they've got good heads, good character. It's where we should be. And anything less than this right now, to be honest, we, we, we'd be disappointed because it's where it's really where we should be. We thought we knew we'd be in the thick of it. You know, we should be a playoff team. Um, and our goal is to keep getting better, be playing great football by the end of the season. What has this start been like for you, and what does it mean to you to see these guys reach that level of uh, success that they have up to this point in the season? You know, just I'm just proud of the guys. I'm proud of the work that they put in. Um, you know, thankful for the coaching staff that I have. So it, it's been, you know, it's been everybody pulling in the same direction. You know, from the parents and their support to the school, to the community. But the guys really worked hard. And, and again, we, we've got some talented kids. We we knew last year. We, you know, we took some lumps. Um, we but we were we knew we had a lot coming back. And we had to learn how to compete, learn how to do things the right way. And once these guys, it clicked about halfway through the season, and they've never stopped. So they had an outstanding summer. You know, they're all in. They don't question. They're all in. You know, they 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 come, they they show up, they work hard, they have great attitudes, uh, they're coachable, and they're great kids. You know, so it's it's been, it's where we we think we should be. Uh, you know, and they, as a coach, I couldn't be more proud than to see their hard work paying off for them. What's it been like for you to just be back out there coaching this team and now have them to the level that you are right now? Well, you know, it was, again, I, I can't take all the credit because it's, again, they're good players. And, you know, it, it's good. A lot of, you know, talented kids make good coaches. So it's, it is, what, you know, I, I'm very fortunate to have some talented players. But, you know, it's also, it's our staff. Um, you know, we're you know getting used to each other again, working together again, getting everybody on the same page. I think that's probably the easiest thing now is kids, especially on the offensive side of the ball, we're now speaking the same language. Where last year it was new for them, you know, it was their third offense in three years, and so new concepts and new ways to do things, and so now they understand it. So we're able to expand what we do and make adjustments because now we're all speaking the same language. And, you know, that, that's, that's really big. And, you know, the, probably the, from our, you know, the, probably the, they see it most probably our quarterback, you know, our quarterback's a junior, but he's been outstanding. He's been, you know, he is just, he's, he's running the offense. He's taking care of the football. Uh, he's making plays all over the place. But he's been a great decision maker. And then part of it is just because he understands what we're trying to do. Um, and again, defensively, uh, we, we switched up our schemes this year which again is even more of a credit to uh, uh, Ricky Powell and Russ Purdy and John Blackstock and Brian Gannon and Derek Williams. Those guys have been working for months, uh, to, you know, on this, you know, we went back to an odd front defense and uh, we have our own variation of it. And uh, to see those guys and the way those kids are playing, the way the kids have bought in, it's just been a lot of hard work, but it's just, it's, it's gratifying to see the hard work paying off. But again, it, it, the credit goes to the kids because they, they've just worked their butts off. What are some things that you were really concerned about this matchup that you've got coming up this Friday with Stony Creek? You know that's always going to be a battle. They're coming to your place, but you know you're going to get a fight. They're going to give you everything they've got. So what are some things you guys got to do to be successful in trying to get that victory over them? 
Well, again, it's, it doesn't matter who you play in your way, Red. Every game is a battle. And so, you know, we've got to do the thing. we got to make sure that we don't beat ourselves. we we got to make sure that we've done a great job of taking care of the football. We've got to stay away from penalties. We've got to continue to tackle well. Um, you know, again, our kids, you know, our coaches prepare our, our team well, but you got to make sure that we're, we're talking, we're thinking, not making mental mistakes. Uh, you know, so if, if, and also, too, you know, the, the, our kids have done a good job of putting last week behind them. You know, they, they I was a little bit worried about, okay, how, you know, they. it's one thing to, you know, I, I'm old. I've been here before. You know, we, we've had teams, in the, you know, that have been here before. But these guys, this is their first time experiencing this. So they got to learn to handle success. That's part of it as well. You learn to handle success, put it behind you, and move on to the next week. You know, we, we, we always talk about 24-hour rule. You can enjoy it for 24 hours, and it's time to focus on the next opponent. So Stoney is, you know, they, they do what they do well. You know, they're a power running team. Um, they're physical on defense. So it's, again, it's, 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 we got to be fundamentally sound and, and uh, you know, we think we got a good plan and, and we'll see. If it's pizza night, Sheldon Street Pizza has got you covered. Sheldon's pizzas are always made fresh when you order them, and the readers of the Lake Orion Review have voted Sheldon's breadsticks as the best in Lake Orion. Stop by Sheldon Street Pizza at 3767 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township, or you can order online by visiting SheldonStreetPizza.com. Don't forget to try one of Sheldon's salads with his special blend of homemade salad dressings. He's also got some pretty tasty desserts as well. Sheldon Street Pizza. More than just pizza. It's the official pizza of a Duff set. Okay, I want to take a second now to talk to the parents and adults listening to this podcast. If you are looking for a fun night out during the weekend here in Lake Orion, then stop by 4th Coast Cider Works. Fourth Coast Cider Works is the place to be for hard cider in Oakland County. Located in the main entrance to Canterbury Village, Fourth Coast is quality craftsmanship, quality hard cider. Stop by Fourth Coast and try some of their many flavors on tap. You can also take some home in a can or a howler. For a complete list of ciders and hours, go to FourthCoastCiderWorks.com. Fourth Coast Cider Works, the best hard cider is on the fourth coast not available for anyone under the age of 21 please drink responsibly and that's a wrap on this edition of a duff said now be sure to tune in next week when you can hear my full conversations with joey debrinkett and caden de graffenreed Both those young men have exciting stories to share with you, so you're definitely going to want to check those out next week. You can find all the episodes of A Duff Said by just going over to my website, aduffsaid.com. You can also follow this podcast on Facebook. Just look for sports journalist Duff Tyler. You can find me on Twitter slash X by looking me up at Duff Tyler. Now, if you would like to get an alert sent to your mobile device when I post a new show, then become a subscriber. Just head over to Podbean, Apple Podcasts, the iHeartRadio app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Our announcer today was Ben Hassinger. He is Michigan's ukulele ambassador and a Hall of Fame baseball balladeer. Be sure to check out my conversation with Ben Hassinger by choosing one of those options that I just mentioned for listening to A Duff Said. All other announcements are done by Steve Gale, the best high school sports public address announcer in the state of Michigan. As for myself, I'm Duff Tyler, and I'm reminding you that if Duff said it, it must be true, because that's what A Duff said. Send them home, Steve. Thanks for listening, folks. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs>